Welcome to She's a Full-On Monet, a digital lifestyle magazine for women. Every week, our editor-in-chief, Kelly Castillo, along with Megan Block and special guests, participate in a deep-dive discussion about recent articles and topics we have covered. We invite you to become part of our community where everyone's welcome. You can totally sit with us. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to She's a Full on Monet. I'm your host, Kelly, and I have with me here, Megan. Hi. Happy Post Mother's Day, by the way. (laughs) Thank you. Same to you. Um, I'm excited for today's topic. I'm ready to kind of dive right into it just because I feel like we've touched on this topic on a lot of our other topics, um, but we haven't really focused on it specifically. We haven't isolated it. Mm And I think it's something that um, probably every single person listening to this, if they're listening to it because, you know, they've enjoyed any of our past topics, then this one will probably tie right into their life. At least it really resonates with me. This is something that um, I struggle with on an all the time basis. I have now, let's see. Oh, goodness. For 27 years. (laughs) And of the minute your life was no longer your own, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Of course, it's, it's, they've had, had worse um, episodes and, you know, better episodes in that period of time, but it's been a pretty consistent theme in my whole adult life. So yeah, today we're going to be talking about emotional burnout. Mm. And um, I did a little research for this topic uh, to just pull up some talking points and um, things like that. And I found most articles on burnout are job related, career related. I think that's what people associate with the word burnout. And I know that's very much a real thing for a lot of people, um, people who work, you know, high stress or high demand uh, positions. And um, I really get how that could be. I mean, I hear about my son-in-law, right, is a first responder. And I hear about how they, you know, deal with like um, so much emotional burnout from the things that they see on a regular basis in their work. And I know nurses and doctors have that. I can imagine teachers do. I mean, I'm sure there's like potential for emotional burnout in almost every position. I agree. I've heard it talked a lot about too, as well on social media, when you just Mm -hmm. burn out of the wheel and you just need to take a breather. Um, So yeah, the word burnout can be used for lots of different, but emotional burnout, I feel like so, so many people can (laughs) relate to that situation. Absolutely. And I think that's kind of what I wanted to talk about today is how it's not just like career related, you know, you can feel a sense of overwhelm uh, or, you know, energy drained, all the different terms we use for that are interchangeable with burnout. Right. And it, you can feel like that it doesn't have to be career related. No. So um, if you have long-term financial stress, um, that can definitely cause an emotional burnout. I mean, just trying to make ends meet every day every month is really taxing on your psyche. Um, Any kind of caregiving role can very much cause emotional burnout, whether you're caring for, you know, an aging relative or small children or teenagers. I mean, it it really doesn't matter. Caregiving in general uh, is one of those 24 seven roles that just suck our energy. There's, there's a lot. I mean, if you, if you're in a uh, unhealthy relationship and you have that kind of stress that can definitely cause emotional burnout. We're going to kind of cover what it looks like today and things that could be causing it and give just a few tips on um, maybe ways to kind of get yourself out of burnout. I don't want to say like cure it because I don't know if that's a thing, but I think a lot of the topics we we go over have to do with things that we can't necessarily eliminate altogether, but we certainly, there are things that we can do to uh, help ourselves through the process. Because for instance, if your best friend is going through a divorce or something and you just, you're their person and they just dump everything on you and you're kind of in a position where you can't be like, hey, sorry, can't be, you know what I mean? You could get emotional yeah. burnout from a temporary caregiving situation, like I mentioned, or you know, if a a long-term one and, you know, in order for us to survive these situations and I say survive because it feels like survival, we need to know how to navigate and like go through it because there's no eliminating it sometimes, you know? Yeah. That, 
That's a really good point. And I, I have some close friends who um, have spouses or children who suffer from like a mate have gone through like a major depressive episode and they can kind of catch that oh, emotional burnout. Like um, that secondhand feeling. Yeah. Cause it's just, it's yeah. just, you're, you're ever, it's 24 <laughs> seven. Yeah. 24 yeah. seven every day of living in an environment with someone who's going through depression or severe anxiety or addiction issues or any of those like mental health crisis type issues. Yeah. Um, even if they're not your specific mental health issue, being adjacent to it can cause emotional burnout for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Because sometimes it's just your environment, you know, if your spouse is in between jobs, you know, or mm -hmm. if their mother just died, like sometimes situations happen to the people we are love the most and we live with and that energy, I'm very like, I'm a big believer on that energy in the room, right? Where <clears throat> if someone is going through that, it, it, you just, everyone feels it. You know, I grew up like that, where my mom was very much in control of the energy of the room. And if she was in a negative headspace, everyone there was in a negative headspace. So I'm very aware of how that can shift if someone is in just like, but sometimes it's just, it's not even something they can do anything about. So how yeah. do you get through it and get through your day and not just be literally like, drained by the end of the day, day in and day out? I mean, it can just feel like, taxing because right you know if your husband is going through something but you also have to tend to small children and you have a job to show up for there are just things in our world that we can't just be like sorry i need a time out you know so how do you suffer through burnout and still live in a, a the real world because we all go through things right because it's unfair Absolutely. we all kind of want to be like hi i need a time out for like a month and then i'll get back to you but that's not real life you know so during these burnouts i feel like you can't just take a minute, you know, you can, but not really, you know, right. That that's, what's hard. I mean, grief can be an emotional burnout period of time. I mean, and it doesn't need to be you that's grieving it. Like you said, it could be your spouse who's grieving a family member or a chronic illness, um, can really cause some emotional burnout, whether it's yours or someone in your immediate family, just dealing with any kind of stressor like that on an everyday basis. And you're absolutely right that when we hear about career burnout, which is how burnout, the word burnout is usually used. Usually if it's personal, it's considered like being drained, being fatigued, being overwhelmed, being, you know, um, there are other words we use, but burnout is a really good oh, word. I use burnout. I'm like, I'm literally like pouring with an empty cup here. I'm burnt. I'm, you know, you know, right. Yeah. It's, it's all this, but it, use whatever word you want. It's the same thing. <laughs> Yeah. And if, when it's career, I mean, the advice is usually to take vacation time or, um, break up into long weekends. If you can't get away for a whole week or two week period from your responsibilities at work, um, take a few long weekends and where you don't respond to work emails or calls and you get away. But, but how do you do that when it's, um, your spouse or, you know, your, your own personal mental health issue or grieving process or chronic illness or whatever it is like, if you, if it's your day to day and there's no escaping it, like it can, you can feel very trapped. You can feel very stuck in your space. Yes. And that's not a great feeling. Um, and it's very lonely feeling. It's very lonely. I, I think it might be even lonelier if it's not your crisis. If, if it's someone you love going through a crisis, because, um, the, the feeling of being stuck and trapped and wanting to escape the situation triggers feelings of like guilt. And also you don't want to be a burden on that person. That's, that's, that's already that's, dealing with yeah. something. So you can't, you can't unload your trauma onto the person that's, that's caused the trauma and loaded onto you. So you feel like you have to buck up and be the bigger person. We all know that in relationships, it's like not always perfect. And you know, when you're down, they'll be there for you kind of thing. But when you're in that moment, it just feels so, um, like suffocating, you know? Yeah. And, and then you don't want to complain about it because no. they already feel bad enough. Then they know and they're, they're reading you. Right. Yeah. So you can't, I mean, it's not resentment. It's not that it's, it's like, um, this feeling of, of not having anyone, like you said, that you can share your feelings with without that accompanying guilt of how can I complain when he's do going through this or she's going through that. Um, their situation is obviously much worse. But that doesn't mean that you don't have the right to 
voice your feelings or concerns and, and feel your feelings, but I can see how that would happen. And, yeah. it, and that's an incredibly lonely place to be. It is. Yeah. I think the, the number one key is, is we're probably going to touch on with each thing that we, each tip that we give is going to be, you know, su your support system, mm -hmm. because I think the only way to get through really tough times is if you have a support system that can be great friends. It can be family. It can be, um, any kind of outlet that you have that some sort of outlet, even yeah. if it's not a person, if it's a hobby or, you know, a favorite book or, you know, a television show or like, you know, something that you have, that's, you know, an out, some sort of outlet. Cause you could be, you could have moved to a new city and be going mm -hmm. through some sort of trauma and be kind of isolated already, you know, absolutely not, have, not be around the, those people that make you feel safest. So it's like, I, I never want anyone to feel like, Oh, well, I, I don't, I can't check off that box. So I'm, I'm screwed basically, you know, yeah. sometimes, sometimes simply going for a run or, you know, taking a walk out on the beach, you know, is like, it's, it's a good outlet to, or therapy, <laughs> you know, like talk, talk to somebody who can just, you can trauma dump all the time on and like, let them know how you're feeling. And there's no feeling of like, they got to pick you back. Like, you know, that's what therapy's for. It's great. It's yeah. That's what they're here for. That's, that's, that's the purpose of it. So there's yeah. no feelings of guilt or needing to reciprocate because I know for myself, when I'm in a bad mental space and I want to just like you said, kind of trauma dump on someone. I know I'm not, I don't have the bandwidth to reciprocate it. Um, and, and when someone asks you, how are you? And then you're like, blah, uh, that's how I am. <laughs> how are you? It's, it's like the most loaded question ever. You're yeah. Like, Do you really and you know, know that like, if they turn around and want to share with you that you don't have the energy or the reserves anywhere to be there for them, it feels very, in my mind, it feels very one-sided and I don't like that. Um, so I, I, it's hard for me, but yeah. Okay. So let's talk about some of the symptoms of burnout in case, because again, as human beings, we tend to normalize all of the stuff happening in our life and to just, we continuously adapt our baseline to what our circumstances oh, are boy. the things we accept as people yeah <laughs> yeah so you may not when, even be I'm, aware yeah you may not even be aware and that's when it's most dangerous because uh it can really manifest itself in physical problems i mean you, I'm, a lot of physical illnesses are tied to stress and if you don't have any way of um any outlet for how you're feeling you're going to end up, it's going to come out somewhere. If it doesn't come out in words or actions, it's going to come out in your health and your physical body. That's just our, that's just how we are. I mean, if you ask any, any doctor, what main issues are caused by stress, the list is probably longer than the issues that aren't, you know, if not caused, at least exacerbated by stress. Yeah. Yeah. It's scary. So, um, when you're burnt out, you can struggle to feel motivated. So you may continuously set, you know, long-term or short-term goals for yourself and have trouble sticking to them. You can just not feel motivated even when you have time off to get up and do things that you enjoy. Um, it, it's a, just a general kind of lack of motivation. It's like being an active procrastinator. Yeah, you know, exactly. It's like you just, yeah, there's that, that fire that we all kind of stem from, from within is just like, Mm -hmm. well, I'm gone. And I can give a, a good example of this because for myself, I like things to be really neat. Um, I like things to be clean. I'm, ha I'm, I'm calmer in a clean environment, but when my kids were really young and I was very burnt out, if I had even an hour or a half hour break, I would have told myself, I'm going to get up and, you know, clear that sink of dishes and I'm going to clean up one area so that I can like sit there and relax in it. And the time would come and I would just completely zone out for that 30 minutes or an hour or an afternoon or whatever it was and accomplish absolutely nothing. Even though I knew I would feel better long-term if I did the thing I needed in order to feel a little bit better in my space, but I just couldn't find the motivation to do it. Um, and that's a great example of lacking motivation. Uh, I, I would have directly benefited from doing the thing, but I just couldn't motivate myself to do it. Um, when you're burnt out, you tend to be much more easily irritated. 
then when you're not burnt out, and I, this is very, very common. Um, I, I, I think everybody is more short tempered when they're burnt out, less patient and um, just kind of have more of a trigger for reacting or they react in, in, in a, you know, they have their reaction is not necessarily appropriate to what they're reacting to. So it could be like a tiny thing. And then you're like, ah, and it is, normally that would not bother you, but it's not that thing that you're reacting to. It's, it's the overall feeling. Yeah. Yeah. And I think most moms especially can understand that. It's not that one last thing. It's the no. everything that happened in the days oh. preceding it. Oh man. Yep. And then your kid is like, why are you freaking out over like something so small? And it's a daily reminder that I'm trying to see what I'm doing through my child's lens because my mom, I mean, God, now that I'm on this side, I'm like, I freak out all you want, mom. I get every piece of it. But when I was on that side, I was like, my mom is crazy. Right. So I'm just trying to realize that they have no idea all that I went through before I picked them up at school. And it's really not their fault. You know, like it's really hard. It's really hard, but like, you're right. You know, like there's the kids don't see it the same way we see it. Um, no, I mean, I would, I uh, would go, I would go to work a nine to five job with an hour commute each way. And the kids would be home. And I was as burnt out as a person could get going through a divorce at the time too. And I remember, you know, asking my oldest kid to take, you know, some chicken out of the freezer or something for dinner that night. Of course they didn't do it. And, and then I would get home and see that there was nothing defrosted for dinner and just lose my shit. <laughs> and it wasn't like, Hey, I asked you to do one thing and you didn't do it. It was that, you know, you're already feeling mom guilt that you're not home. You're tired from working. You just, you, you got were trying a dinner out of flipping nowhere because you, the chicken's frozen. So what yeah. do you do? Yeah. <laughs> and I was already like trying to muster up the energy to make the chicken. Yeah, that, that was would, already more than I would have done. I'd be like, huh, take out tonight, kids. You know? Yeah, and then it's not, and then I'm I'm financially stressed. So now I have to go buy something for dinner that I can't afford. Yeah, it's frustrating. And I have to go back out again after I just commuted for an hour. I mean, it just, I would just completely, like literally put my face in the pillow and scream because it was, and it wasn't about the chicken, obviously. Obviously. I'm like on the verge of tears because it's like so it's such relatable stories because it's true it's so hard you know um but how do you explain to a child who's like 10 that I got up so early drove you guys to school went to work worked all day uh job I don't love drove an hour each way got home and I just want to make the stupid chicken so I can feed you something healthy and get rid of a little bit of my guilt before I put you to bed <laughs> because then we have that guilt that if we tell them that they'll feel bad right because it's not bad. and now we're triggering some like anxiety in our kids early on that it's our fault all of a sudden like it's it's like I tell my I tell my dad all the time you did not tell me it was going to be this hard like no one no one warned me that this parenting no. thing because anything you do that's a natural human reaction you're messing them up somehow so yeah good luck because every move you have to make is has to be flipping perfect. Cause if it's not, you're causing them therapy 15 years from now. And it's like, I'm right. sorry. I had a natural reaction to my car, not working. Like it's just, and then you got to wait 30 years. So you're my age to, for them to look at you and be like, you know what? I get you now. Like it's so frustrating. Cause it's like so frustrating. my dad laughs. Cause he's like, yeah, it took you long enough to understand this. I was like, I'm sorry. I had to be in it. to like really <laughs> understand it. Cause it's hard. Burnout happens on like a daily basis for people who have young children. I don't even know how the single, I don't want to know how the single moms do it. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. I don't want to know how the moms that have to work from home being single running like Oh yeah, I've been, I've been there. Triplets that they weren't prepared for situation. Like <laughs> I, there's so many worst cases. That's what gets me through the day is I'm like, <laughs> it could be way worse. I bet, you know, like I could have yeah. two more of these suckers running around. I don't yeah. know. I, I, I've been there and people would say all the time to me, I don't know how you do it. And I'm like, don't still is don't. there. Wait, is there an option to not do it? <laughs> because nobody told me that <laughs> wait, I'm doing it because I have no other option. <laughs> 
but you're making it sound <laughs> like there was a choice I made. Hold on. Is there another door that I can walk through? Yeah, no right. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, oh, they're the best decisions we've ever made, but still. I was, yes. A lot of emotional burnout, especially in this day and age, because we're just so in tune with the feels and the, and every, so much more is happening. I feel like so much more is happening now. So, I mean, can you just try emotional burnout for the year 2020 through 2022? Oh my gosh. I like, can't even imagine on. as far oh, as so I might, I'll make all these examples of how burnt out and tired I was as a mom of four little ones, uh, as a single mom of four little ones. But I, if I had to do that during COVID, I'm, 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 I feel, oh, like, hell I feel, no. I feel like I could, for, like if the Avengers assembled today, I could join them because I, I live, I was a mom through COVID. That was, yeah. that was hard because you had to wear, that was like the one time where I'm like, I felt as close to Barbie as I could. Cause I was doing like 14 different professions during that time. I was a yeah, teacher. I, swear. I was like a baker. I made sourdough bread. I was like a videographer because TikTok was starting then. Like it was just, it was an insane time to be alive and be a parent. So if everyone had emotional burnout, even if you didn't have kids, because it was just, you're just, you're hearing the news and you're being told how to act. And then you're being told what to do. And then your job's going in and out and meeting and not meeting, go home. Like it was, yeah, we're all just the, trying to get over the emotional burnout of 2020. Yeah. <laughs> Forever. Between, you know? the, between COVID and the intense like political environment and how a war our going on was in the last couple of years and now we've got you know a war go it's just there's a um, lot so just, okay lost it anyway we're more getting symptoms yeah. yes mm -hmm. um small tasks feel overwhelming this is very much a thing um i know i have a daughter with anxiety she calls it she doesn't call it anxiety she calls it stressy depressy but <gasps> Yeah. <laughs> uh, but her room looks like a tornado went off and she says yes i know it does um i am currently not in a state to be able to resolve that situation so <laughs> are is she, are is she like you though because i am like i feel like you and i are split from the same person like i i cannot chill out in my environment if it's messy and it's really hard for me to remind myself that it's not all about that and people like doesn't matter but like even in my most well it, i would have to be in a really low place to look at a pile in my room and go eh whatever you know like i cannot fully feel like i can get over whatever i'm going through in a messy environment so is she like you or is she cool with messy all the time she's she she's cool she clears cool. her a little spot big enough for her to lay down in and, <laughs> oh and she God. just vibes with it and then event you know one day she'll wake up and have like a crazy burst of energy and manically clean the whole room and then okay. you know it slides back into with uh, it slides along with her back into stressy depressy and so just, you can tell what's going on inside her by her environment yes possibly yes okay. and sometimes you know it's way too much and she obsessively cleans the whole room and tries to move all the furniture around and then like has a full breakdown has so. she tried because i'm learning this too i'm a work in progress i'm talking to myself too has she tried cleaning as she goes so she doesn't have like one massive day of cleaning and then the opposite do you know what i mean yeah i, I i'm trying to get that in too because I, I don't just... i don't know that she's <laughs> tried or that it has been or it matters. successful <laughs> for her it does not seem like it from the state of her environment at the moment <laughs> but um yeah, some days she just needs to make a burrito. She calls it bur her burrito, like a burrito herself in a blanket and watch the same show she's watched like 10 oh, times. Same. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, that's therapy for some people. I totally it, 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 gen it genuinely is. It works for her. So anyway, small tasks yeah. can feel a very overwhelming when you're not in a, in a good mental space. Mm -hmm. um, and that's when you get like the chair functioning as the extended closet because hanging up anything seems really hard I've been there or <laughs> you know I when I'm really overwhelmed um I have no energy to like prepare um, I'll prepare a meal for my family but preparing a meal for myself is way too much and I'll just have a bowl of cereal or a handful of triscuits or some almonds or I don't know just whatever it requires the least amount of effort for me uh, and that <laughs> Is I think that comes really from telling. like your time being limited and you're not going to spend that limited time like 
chopping up some celery and stuff like that. Like you'd rather, like, I'm the same way where I'm like, man, like I could make something really nice, but at the end of the day, I'm going to throw some Cocoa Krispies in there and try and catch as much of the show that I've watched a billion times, because that is self-care for me at that moment. It's not cooking 30 minute meal, even though I probably should and am capable of it. That's just not how I love myself. Yeah, <laughs> you know? that's, it's very true. It's very true. I tell myself I'll do that in 40 years when I'm like so bored and I'm like, huh, I, maybe I'll try making, you know, pasta tonight and like from scratch. Like, I feel like that's a later in life situation for now. This is where I'm at. You know, this is my pace. So absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, this one really resonates with me, either not eating anything or overeating. And that is fully me. Um, depending on what's causing me stress and what's causing my burnout, I will either have no energy to eat at all. Like even the function of chewing seems really like too much, or I will just go right for the comfort foods. And it's just all of the pastries and all of the cheesy things. And I don't, yeah, but no vegetables in sight. Uh, the, those are my two extremes when it comes to like eating and stress, but everyone is different. No. And this, that's, I mean, this is my life story. I mean, when 2020 hit and I hit like emotional burnout and all kinds of burnout, I, I stopped eating, um, because I wasn't moving and we weren't doing anything. And then I realized the only things I was eating were like iced coffee and croissants, you know, it's like, it wasn't a balanced diet. Like there was no vegetable going in my body unless like somebody did it for me, like made it into a something. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that's why I started working out because I was like, if I work out, then I'll get hungry enough and I pick a goal that'll cause me to eat certain foods. And then I will trick my body back into eating better because my depression and my anxiety and my burnout caused me to literally like start. I was like, to see my pictures of myself, I was like starving myself because my body wasn't, you know, getting any nutrition off of the choices I was making. So yeah. I needed to do something to trick my body back into healthy choices. It was, had nothing to do with, I want to look a certain way. And it's such a personal uh, story that not a lot of people know it, but really, I mean, this one resonates with me the most because I was like, I was like punishing myself through the act of not eating like my kids mm -hmm. were eating fine everybody was eating fine um but like when it came to preparing my own food like I would just straight up not eat or make a really stupid choice yeah know? and I, I want to say that one of the things I've learned as I, I've learned this in like some of the trauma parenting classes that I've taken um when we don't feel like we have control over our environment or our life for whatever reason uh, even subconsciously we do this, we start to hyper control our body and, and, uh, do, and, and really do extreme autonomy of our body. Uh, children do this all the time because they don't have control over their full environment. So, I mean, they will either regress with potty training and things like that, or if they're older, it could be self-harm. It can be eating issues. It can be, you know, getting tattoos. It can be anything that, that exhibits control over their body. Uh, and, and as we age that we're not any different, we do the same things. We just aren't maybe as um, aware of it as we would be when it's a child that we're parenting. So when I am really stressed out and I'm having trouble with food, it's usually like nothing sounds good to me or everything sounds meh. And I just like, I'll have two bites of something and be over it. And then two bites of something else and be over it. And I know that about myself. So one of the things I know that I can do if I have a really stressful, busy day is just instead of trying to like, I, I guilt myself and I feel bad that I didn't eat meals. I'm like, oh, I, I, I just can't seem to eat a meal today. That's OK. I give myself permission to do that. And I make myself like a little tray of like small snacks so that I can just I can literally be OK with having two bites of this and then I don't want it anymore. And then two bites of something else. And no, that doesn't sound good. And it. it I put the plate together in a way that will still fuel my body. If that yeah, makes because sense. Because I, I feel like we know, we know deep down that we, we literally, if we keep going down this path, we'll hit a point of actual empty and our body cannot, we'll have to, we'll have to eat something at some point. So like, even if like some cashews are out or some cheese is out, like, yeah, at least you're putting, <clears throat> giving your body like 8% versus 0%. It's right. Because right? my yeah. other option is to sit at my desk all day until four o'clock and then realize Ugh. I haven't had anything that day and go and gorge myself on stuff that's 
easy like ice cream in the freezer and like that's not gonna cheese, process whatever. like you're no, no, no. hungry in an hour and your body is just gonna like go wonky crazy yeah right or crazy. or I work from home so every time I pass through the pantry grab a handful of something without planning it out also bad but I know I don't have time or energy to sit and chew a whole salad or prepare or even you're just not also in the mental salad. discipline to do that no I'm not you're on burnout you're not thinking about what's best for you. You're not at all. You're, no. you're, you're just realizing that you are like a, sh- like a, a shell of yourself and something like something is wrong, you know, yeah. something is off. And so you're not going to be like, Oh, something's off. I think I'm going to go prepare some, a nice green salad. Like you're not going to do that. So even if you just get a little bit of food in you, that's like a better choice, that little bit of food, like, believe me that those, that handful of cashews will make your head a little bit more clear and make you kind of get yourself out of it a little bit to make an even better choice versus just going on nothing or going on coffee, which a lot of people do. And that Mm -hmm. exacerbates your anxiety. So it's just, you got to like get that little start to give yourself like, cause there's that good and bad shoulder angel, you know, and it's like, we're constantly fighting it's so tough when, cause emotional burnout is so close to what it's like to be like depressed that it's yeah. like, they all sound the same. It sounds the same where it's like the side effects of emotional burnout are so similar to something like depression where. Yeah. And even you know, when I, when I try to plan ahead, knowing my week is going to be stressful and meal prep or something like that, I'm so oppositional in my nature that then I look at that food and I'm like, you can't make me eat that. <laughs> like that's really? I, I made it myself. Like I'm not, who am I defying? Who, who am I telling off my own self? But I'm like, no, I'm not eating that because I told myself I was going to eat that. Now I don't want to eat that. I'm just like sassy, rebellious when I'm stressed out. So making that, you know, snack plate for myself and setting it next to my computer or my wherever I'm going to be that day. I will mindlessly pick at it, even if I don't realize I'm doing it. And then I will get some fuel in my body. Have you ever been like fully hangry and then eaten something and then realize how completely ridiculous you were when you were hangry? Like that feeling I've done a few times enough to where my, my mind, even when I'm at a very bad place, will go, listen, if you just eat a flipping banana, you will be a better person. Just yes. eat the banana, like, you know, like rarely do I go on empty now because I've done this mental training for over a year now of trying to eat and uh, eat more than I ever have and eat the right foods that it's like, I know better, but when you're in a bad place and you haven't trained your brain to think that way, like you just, you got to get it in, in there. Like, yeah. When I'm, when I'm emotionally upset, my body wants, like my comfort foods are usually sugar-based. Oh yeah. So if I'm already upset, usually means I'm not sleeping on my regular sleep schedule. And then I'm just trying to make myself feel better by eating things like chocolate croissants or chocolate chip pancakes or, you know, golden grams or whatever it is, uh, breakfast. And then lunch is probably worse, like fast food. And I, I'm not doing myself any favors because now I'm exhausted You're and tired. have a headache You're and tired. feel sick yeah. and still have all the emotional issues I had at that day they didn't solve anything for it's me it's actual bullshit that you cannot go to like wendy's and then all your problems go away i right? think it's wrong i think it's sound at the moment it sounds like it sounds like a perfect plan you know as like much, as much as we pay for starbucks it should come with some resolution to our problems. that's my biggest issue because like i suffer with anxiety and when i'm also in emotional burnout i think like oh cool if i just drink this coffee then that will take over for me because this this, this is given up. So I need now to be on autopilot and someone else to move me around. And so that's why I'm like iced coffee. And then I get iced coffee and it like, doesn't do what I want. And I'm like, now I'm wired and aware I'm wired and pissed off and still not, um, like motivated to do anything. You know, don't drink coffee on emotional burnout. It will not fix your problem. No, or do no. your to-do list for you. I've tried, <laughs> you know, yes. it's frustrating. Cause what do you do? What do you do when you have emotional burnout and you've reached this level and you're aware of it? How do you get yourself out of it? Yeah. And especially if you're under emotional burnout for something that is really taking all of your time and energy, like caregiving, uh, you may not have a lot of self-care options that you have time or resources to do. 
other than comfort foods. Mm -hmm. And so it's one of the things that takes like just the same amount of time as eating something healthy, but gives you us like a little tiny serotonin boost. Mm -hmm. And, and it, there are times when that's the only serotonin boost you're going to get. So we get it. We're not I, judging I'm not you. I'm not going to sit here and be like, never get fast food during those moments. Cause no, the, sometimes I'm sorry. Sometimes just... you need it. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, always feeling tired is the next symptom. And this is one of those things where you could even be sleeping the right amount of sleep at night and still feel exhausted all day. And, and this is just your, there, we have different reserves of energy, right? We have a, our physical energy, which is like our natural energy level, whether we've slept enough, whether we're getting enough water and nutrients and the things that give us physical energy, but there's also emotional energy. So you can have, you know, zero emotional energy left and, um, and, and be feel physically tired from not having any emotional energy left. It's, it, it's a crossover. And I've definitely felt that a lot of my life just yawning by three or four in the afternoon. I sleep eight hours a night, but I'm just tired. My, I'm like drained of energy mentally. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I just, and, and there's, and that's the thing is that's when we go towards like uh, artificial energy, like mm -hmm. energy drinks, cat, you know, sugar, tea, and coffee. sugar, coffee, all that stuff. And sometimes it works, but then you know, it's kind of a double-edged sword. If it doesn't work, then you're like, ah, then, then you're all like wired for no reason. Um, but if it does work, then you've kind of trained your brain to think, okay, on those moments where I have nothing left, then this will fix my problem, you know, and then yeah. it becomes an addiction on another level. And, you know, your body is not, you're also not probably getting the type of water intake that you should be if you're emotionally burnt out. Like I say, we're not making like high level choices for our health and our wellness during that level. So if you are depriving yourself of good nutrition and foods and possibly water and drinking and supplementing with sugary foods and, and caffeine, it's only going to exacerbate your feelings and not make you feel any better. It's just going to make you feel worse. So absolutely. What I know, to do, <laughs> you know, a lot of times when we're burnt out, whether it's a career burnout or something going on at home, we can make a lot of mistakes that when we were thinking clearly, we wouldn't make. And I'm not talking about major life choice mistakes, although that is definitely a thing that happens. I'm talking about like, like silly mistakes, like driving away from the house with your coffee on top of the car or, um, you know, any Ooh. like things like that, that you're distracted because you're preoccupied by whatever is going on in your life at the time. And it's almost like a groggy, like uh, brain fog that you can mm -hmm. get when you're really emotionally burnt out. Um, and I know when I've had things, it's almost like you have something going on in the back of your mind and it's distracting your brain from doing your normal activities that, you know, you'll, you'll find your keys in the fridge and you're like, what? <laughs> or, those kinds yeah. of things. That's a really big sign of emotional burnout for sure. I don't have an answer for that one, but it is a sign. Um, okay. So let's talk about some things you can do. You can uh, run away and. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, oh you, could, gosh, you could, but yeah. I'm not recommending it. Um, but taking breaks is really important for everyone. When it's career burnout, everyone suggests the same thing, right? Like we already talked about take vacations, take long weekends, get away from work, turn your phone and your email, you know, don't check it for the weekend, whatever you need to do to take a step back from your work and try to regain some balance in your life. But what do you do when your caregiving is at home and your responsibilities or what's causing your burnout is in your home life? You can't take a vacation from your family and the people, I mean, you can, but uh, it's, it's a taller order. Um, <laughs> but you know, if you're caregiving for an older relative or someone with a chronic illness, there are, there are things called respite care where um, somebody will come and give you a break for like two days and you can, you know, catch up on things you're behind on. You can take a little road trip. You can do whatever you need to do. Uh, I, I know that that is an option because I, I have had to do that with my grandmother in the past. We did respite care a little bit with um, a local nursing home that did that. But I know there are respite care for pretty much everything. If it's, if it's children and childcare that's causing burnout, 
you know, you may have some family resources where you could, you know, send them to grandma and grandpa's for the weekend or something like that and try to get a break. But if it's at all possible to take breaks, I highly recommend it. Again, if you're dealing with something like a chronic illness or um, grief or something like that, you can't take a break from that. You can't take a break from your mental health or the mental health of the people closest to you. It's, it's unfortunately follows you wherever you go. Yeah. But you can give yourself time within those days to feel and to give yourself a break. It's hard when you're going through something, um, say you lost a spouse and you have kids and you have to be on what it feels like on 24 seven, you know, because they're looking to you and you have to help the, you know, the, you have to be there for them when they're feeling down and, and everything, you know, allow yourself to find those moments to be in tune with yourself. Because if you're always trying to please everyone around you and you never, you never turn on to that because there's just some, sometimes there's just no escaping it. Sorry. Sometimes you, you don't have the money to get away. There is no relatives around. You know what I mean? Like sometimes it's yeah. just a really unfortunate situation, but you do have moments within your day that you can find time for yourself. Even if it's, I, and whatever that outlet is, even if it's, you know, a little, a little, you know, yoga at home at the end of the day to clear your mind or journaling or, you know, watching your favorite show or a good cry sesh, you know, or a bubble bath. Like you're human too. We're not, you're not robots on, on legs. Like we, we all have a right to find joy and to get in tune with ourselves and be aware because that's the thing is like, you're hearing all these symptoms and you know, that, that this is you, you categorize as this, you know, it's kind of, it's really a sad awakening when you realize you're, you're experiencing emotional burnout because you know, something is off, you know, but then it's like, now I'm awake to it, but what do I do about it? Sometimes you feel like there's nothing you can do. Um, there's always, there's always something you can do. I experience it a lot. And I feel like sometimes I don't have any time to myself. And so that's why, you know, I continue to work out because I know it checks off a lot of boxes. I don't have a lot of free time, but I know if I work out, it's helping my health. It's helping my emotional stability. It's getting some energy out because I'm not going to have the time to just go run, run three miles. You know, like I need to, this, I get one shot and my, if I could check a bunch of good health and wellness boxes out in one thing, then that's, that's good for me. Yeah, um, absolutely. I know like my husband has, and uh, not, not, he does have anxiety, but it's more like racing thoughts, like the inability mm-hmm. to turn off his brain. Yeah. And, um, and he's a multi-level thinker, which worked great for him, like in his career, but not as much, you know, when he's trying to relax. So I had taught him to play. There's a couple of little like games on his phone that I taught him to play where if he's doing that, it's almost like it's not meditation, obviously, but it allows him to kind of like turn his brain off for just a moment um, and, and kind of shift so that he's just like, he can quiet his thoughts Mm -hmm. for a little bit and that he's found incredibly helpful to be able to kind of transition him from work mode to being at home mode, or when he feels like overwhelmed to kind of jump on his, and I know like games on phones, I get it. Like not everybody's a fan, but well, for, for me, him, I, yeah, good. it's, yeah. For me, I like to just zone out and watch TikTok for five to, even if it's five, 10 minutes after the kids go to bed or after I finish cooking dinner, like it takes me from like, to like, like, like I need that transition. Cause I I'm, I'm similar to that. So I get that. And a lot of people are like, well, screen's not good. Okay. I've tried puzzles guys. And I'm, I'm not a puzzle person. I, I find more of a decompression from just randomly browsing TikTok. Videos, yeah, you know I, I mean? found I when I was commuting to work and I had to leave the office and drive like an hour to get home to kids who would immediately jump all over me, hang off of me, t- want to tell me every single thing that happened to them that day. Um, I used that one hour to, to kind of decompress and transition. And I would listen to books on tape in my car, or I would listen to music that I found mm-hmm. relaxing and try to like kind of deconstruct my day at the office and then leave it behind and be prepared to be fully present when I got home because walking in the door when you're tired and setting down your things and having the kids just jump all over you, uh, you have to, you have, I, I hated commuting, but I did like having that 
period of time because I needed it in order to shift. Absolutely. Because you don't want your kids growing up thinking every time mom walked in the door, she was tired and grouchy, you know, yeah, it's like that's... they're reading, they're reading your body language when you walk in the door. Cause they want you to be excited to see them too. And sorry, they don't, they're not, they don't get what you just went through all day, you know? So yeah, I told, I would put on podcasts too. And like, cause then, you know, it's coming, right. That you can't change that. So it's a good, that's a good transition idea. Yeah. It worked for me. Um, but everybody's different. So find something that even if you can't take a physical break and go away for the weekend or go on a vacation or go even for a hour's walk by yourself, what, if you can't do that for your life circumstances, try to take a mental break where you, whatever works for you. It yeah. could be Listen playing a game your on your phone, music. listening to a podcast, scrolling social media, um, you know, watching an episode of your, I, I did that too. When the kids were small, when they would, I would tuck them all into their beds and then I would take an hour or something and watch a show that was like not appropriate for them to watch like a grown up mm -hmm. show and, um, have some time that was like my own mm -hmm. before I went to bed because yes, I was exhausted and I could have fallen asleep immediately, or I could have cleaned the house or whatever I needed to do, but I needed that time to feel like, um, a little bit more myself and a little bit more of my own identity after they went to bed at night. I don't think there's anything yeah. wrong with that. I feel like even the most giving of people like yourself of your time where you can literally like, like wring the rag and still find something in me at the end of the day, even those type of people are still not okay with starting and opening their eyes and then closing their eyes and not even devoting intentional time to themselves on any level. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, yeah, I'm a great mom. Yeah. I'm a great wife. Yeah. I'm a great, you know, uh, like employee, but like, I'm still a person at the end of the yeah. day, you know? And like, I feel like I'm, cause I'm the same way. I'm like, I probably should go to bed right now, but it's like, and I've seen this show, like I've seen the show five times, but for some reason, like I'm going to watch this show and I'm going to justify why this is good for me. Cause it is good for me. Yeah. You know? I mean, even when I was caregiving for my elderly grandmother, I couldn't, physically escape the responsibilities of that but I could I would read so she, while she was resting or occupied I would I would bring a book with me and I would be reading and it was a little bit of escapism to kind of like um, have my own internal life going on even if it was through a book while I was doing that because it was really emotionally exhausting to care for someone with dementia anyone who's done that can tell you that um, but having a little outlet a little escape uh, to take, you know, she's going to rest for 15 minutes. So I'm going to read a couple chapters of this book and just kind of go into another world for 15 minutes was, I mean, absolutely crucial to getting through that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, a relaxation and self-care, and that could be whatever that means for you. So don't feel guilty as we're saying, if it's scrolling social media or playing a game on your phone, it could also be yoga, meditating, journaling, um, taking a walk, any of the things that make you feel like you and, and make you kind of be able to shut off the thoughts in your head for a little bit. And, and don't, and don't make these things worse. Like for me, for a form of self-care for a while was like, like I said, buying a coffee. And then I realized that that was kind of like working against my issue. Um, as long as it's not harming. Yeah. <laughs> right? yeah. And for me, you know, I tried the doing the meditation thing, but it was something I was adding to my to-do list and felt very much like a chore to me. And I felt like, ugh. I really want to do this, but I have to go meditate because I said I would. That's not what we're talking about. We're no. talking about something that feels natural and comforting to you personally. And that can be whatever it is. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. And we, we've, we've talked about this before. You may have to like, you know, try a handful of things until you find your thing, you know? Yeah. And it doesn't need to be quote unquote productive. It doesn't no. need to be that. Oh man. Sometimes just sitting there sometimes. Oh my gosh. Just seriously sitting there. And yeah, like I mean, doing that. I, I can sit the there and like pet my dog, and it's such a serotonin oh, boost and relaxing. Yeah. Just turning off your brain and your thoughts and all the motors for it's like, yeah, it's sometimes that's good too. And you know, so yeah, it's just as long as you do something because when you're aware that you're emotionally burnt out and you continue as as you've been going without adjusting course at all, you're gonna oh, crash. You're man, gonna crash can't hard. wait to see your freaking crash because. Like we, like we talked about, like it's, it's going to happen. Like yeah, it's, there's it, been zero people that have been like, I've had emotional burnout and I continued as is, and everything was fine. Zero people. 
They yeah. like, they, they lose it on the barista <laughs> at Starbucks. Cause she added caramel to the top of their drink and she didn't ask for caramel. And now all of a sudden she's like getting like all the treats thrown at her, literally physically assaulting the person. Cause she just lost it because she ignored our signs. <laughs> yeah, exactly. About her day. So like, once you're aware you're burnt out, like this is your body and your mind's way of saying like SOS, like we need, we need to hold on a beat because I don't care what your deadlines are. I don't care who needs you. I don't care what's going on. If you can't find two flipping to five minutes to 20 minutes in your day, a 24 hours, Beyonce finds the time. Okay. You can find the time, right? Like there's really no excuse. I know there are people that take care of somebody who has, you know, like who's, who cannot like do anything for themselves. And it's a 24 seven job. Like I get it. There are some really crazy scenarios out there, but even then like, yeah, Set that alarm be... fell up for 3.30 in the morning so you can watch The Simpsons and feel something. I don't know. I just feel like. No, you're right. You got to find time. It. Gotta it's like when it. they tell you sleep when the baby sleeps, when the nah, baby's little. Uh, sometimes it. that's what you need to do. But sometimes you also just need to mindlessly scroll your phone while the baby sleeps. And that's okay, too. So uh, support from friends and family. This is really important. And I know that it's not an option for everybody. Um if you don't have family close by or you don't have a, a good network of friends, that's fine. We're not trying to add something else to your list. To, oh, on top of everything else you're doing, go make friends. Um, no, <laughs> but you may have someone, even if they live a distance from you, that you can FaceTime with or call on the phone or text and just kind of like keep that connection so that you have some lifeline to support. A lot of people don't know what you're going through and just simply... Mm -hmm finding out that you're going through all that. And then just the, sometimes like I have volunteered to take someone's kid for an hour, just as like a play date. And they're not used to that type of like kindness from someone else. And they're just like, what? Like I can do nothing for it. Yeah. Bring her over. Like you need a break, man. I don't know. You seem stressed. Like a lot of people are really willing to help, willing to listen, willing to give their time and their energy, you know, so that you can get back on track because you know, yeah, <laughs> emotional is... burnout will happen a few times. I'm sorry. It's not like a midlife. Well, there's like the midlife crisis thing. Yeah. Um, but emotional burnout might happen to you more than once. And if you don't find your center again, it's never going to regulate. So yeah. if you have absolutely uh, like a soccer mom friend who like their, your kid gets along with their kid and like, they can help you. It doesn't even have to be like your bestest friend in the whole world. Just sometimes just utilizing the people in your life that I'm um, sorry, like I can tell when certain people are just um, like their, their wires just so thin, right? Like mm -hmm. you can just tell that they're just like one bad syllable away from you flipping this, like <laughs> pissing them off. Right. Because they're just going through something. So like yeah. people know when you're, when your heart is heavy and when your mind is heavy and when your life is heavy and a lot of people are, have know what it's like to feel like that, you know? And um, and it's never, it's never not awkward to offer help, you know? So if you can kind of get the sense that you can trust someone, utilize those people, you know, even if it's not a yeah. best friend, it could just be a fun neighbor. <laughs> it's, it's really hard to ask for help. Um, and it gets harder the more we need it. I have a real hard time accepting help from other people or asking for help from other people, which is funny because it, acts of service is totally my love language. Um, <laughs> but I can't accept acts of service. It's so, so, so strange. But um, you would be very surprised how many people would help you if you allowed it, or if you even had the mindset, the open-mindedness to look around you and see, you probably have more resources than you think you do. Um, and and this is a much more loving world than it can feel sometimes. Mm. So if you do feel lonely and isolated, just... Um, allow yourself to even consider the idea that someone might be willing or, or able to help you and, um, and, and look for opportunities where that might come about because it could just be someone who smiles at you and makes you feel better. It could be someone like Megan said, who can take the kids for the afternoon or just while you go to the grocery store by yourself for once in a million years, anything like that. I mean, it's, it makes all the difference in the world for you to be able to recharge your batteries and come back, you know, to the situation with like more energy and stamina to get through it. Yeah. And you certainly don't have to like 
trauma dump on the person to get their help. You can just find a way that makes you feel comfortable um, <clears throat> to let them know that you're just, you're a little bit, uh, this week is a bit crazy for you. And, you know, like you just, whatever way you need to find that help, you don't feel like you have to tell them exactly what's going on, yeah. you know? Um, yeah. So it's just it's utilizing the people in your life so that you don't feel like you have to do it all. Cause no one, no one can do it all. No We're not meant to, even if you like can do it all, like for how long can you do it all? You know? Cause I know a lot of people that I'm like, dang, like you and I have the same hours in the day. I have no clue how you do all that. Like, but how long can you do that for, you know? Cause eventually it's going to catch up with you. If you just go, 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 go and serve, 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 you know, emotional burnout can come a lot from just giving so much of yourself to so others, you know, or yeah. That, and we, We've talked How about long? before, like letting people know that you're, you know, going through a difficult time. You don't need to be specific about it will create so much more understanding, whether it's your boss or your coworkers or um, people in your life who like you've become the go-to to ask to do things. Just letting them also know, you giving know yourself like permission to not yeah. be so hard on yourself and expect so much of yourself. You know, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Be, give yourself some grace and, and understand that, you know, we're, we're a tribal animal, right. From caveman time, we're not meant to do everything ourselves. So the fact that we're living in the way that we're living now, where people are isolated and kind of within their own immediate families, instead of like the village or tribal environment that we were for the whole rest of humanity, it's hard. It's hard. We don't acknowledge that enough that it is hard. It was, we were really not equipped to do things the way we're doing them now. No. So we need to be kind to herself. I think at some point, emotional burnout, it's like, how long can emotional burnout go for until you are maybe thinking it might be something more, you know? Cause it's yeah. like, okay, I don't have the energy to do the dishes today. And then that day turns to three days and that day turns to four days and you've done self care, right? But yeah, you still are feeling like, off you know yeah, like there, there's just there something some, not um, clicking there's some overlap on the bubbles between emotional burnout and depression and and yeah. you need to be really cautious and aware of that because if this is something that goes on for an extended period of time or really is affecting your quality of life and it's not necessarily circumstance based yeah. because it is normal to feel have all the symptoms of something like depression if you're dealing with major grief chronic illness caregiving, yeah. all of that normal, severe life change Very of normal. some sort. Exactly. Right. But if, if it's, if that's not the circumstances that you're living in and you're feeling all these things, it, it's a very good idea to talk to a professional and find out if you, if you might have depression because you might benefit from medication or therapy or something like that. And you don't want to just let this go thinking, Oh, I'm just burnt out. Mm -hmm. It can get really serious and you, and you definitely don't want to deal with that. So, um, we talked about this a little bit, but exercise, sleep, nutrition, very important, uh, super necessary to kind of curb burnout. Um, sorry, I'm plugging my computer in. Um, so you definitely want to make sure as much as possible that you're getting enough sleep, that you're drinking enough water, that you um, get some form of exercise if that's possible for you, that you occasionally eat a vegetable if that's possible for you. <laughs> right. um, and we all know what we need to do for our body to feel its best. And so if, if it's within your means to try to make that happen, it, you will feel better. You will feel better if you take better care of your body. We all know it. It just can be really daunting task when you're not, when you're so far away from it. But well, also at a certain age, you don't really get the luxury of ignoring it. I mean, you can mm -hmm. try and eat chocolate croissants for three months at a time when you're in your forties or fifties and see how that does. But like, eventually like your body will like reject the idea of your childish decisions. You yeah. Know I'm I mean? not, for myself, I am, you know, turning 46 this year. And if I stay up until two in the morning, a couple days in a row, I, I, I'm like, I'm hung over basically. Right? <laughs> right? I feel nauseous. I'm exhausted. My body hurts. Like it's not, it's not fun. It's not good. No, we're not the same type of like engine on the inside that we were when in our like teens, when we could be like, I could eat like ice cream all day, every day and be fine. Yeah, maybe. But now if my body did that, it'd be like, what is going on up there? Exactly. You know? It's so. too much. So 
And then I, the, the last tip is something we talk about a lot on this show, but I think it's important um, is to just, and, it, and I'm, I understand that when you're in the thick of it, this is probably the hardest one to do, but uh, have the gratitude thing, just having a moment where you are grateful for what you do have going on in your life. And I understand that is extremely hard. That is extremely hard when you're in the thick of grief yeah, well, or you're in the thick yeah. of financial mm-hmm. stress, like being grateful for what you do have um, can really be challenging, but we all can find something to be grateful about. But like yeah. saying but, that, I know how saying that makes it sound so simple, right? <laughs> yeah. But I also know that if you constantly only focus on the bad things that could snowball into like making everything worse like all this feeling that you're feeling it can really feel like that cloud is just getting bigger and it's it's like inevitable if you focus on the other things it's like tricking your mind into getting into a different place you know it's all these like depression things too so yeah we don't want to silly especially when you literally feel like there is nothing to be grateful for I mean some people have been thrown some really messed up scenarios you know and even then when you have nothing left I mean it's your soul's way of survival, right? You got to try and preserve, preserve that because you're trying at the end, we don't want to stay in this feeling of emotional burnout. We don't want to stay there forever. You got to pull yourself out of it. And these are the things that you need to do to pull yourself out. You know, some may feel uncomfortable. Some may feel cheesy. Some may feel pointless. Some may feel stupid, but it's all about tricking our mind and preserving our soul because it's just, it's hard out there. It Whatever is. you're going through, it's hard out there, even if it's just existing in 2022. Yeah, it absolutely is. And it, it can be really hard to find something positive to focus on and to and to feel grateful when you're, you know, in, in a really negative headspace and sometimes for, as you said, very good reason. But the, the more we try to look at things um, with positive overtones, and reframe the statements that we make to ourselves with a positive tone to it, it really does change your energy and your, it really does change your outlook long-term. I know it's hard and it feels weird the first few times that you do it, whether you're saying like affirmations or you're just trying to rewrite the narrative that's going on in your head, but it can, it can feel weird and, and like you said, cheesy and awkward, you don't even but have it to really say helps. It. Just think about them. If you think about one, two things right now, right at this very second that you're grateful for it, you can feel it in your head. Like the, the heaviness, like the tenseness in your brain kind of loosens a little bit. You can, you can literally feel the pressure leave your mind a little bit. And, and it's like, do that and practice that. And like, because because you love yourself enough to be, be in a good space. Like we, we don't, we're not nice enough to ourselves. No, we're not. We don't speak to ourselves nice enough. We don't give ourselves enough time. We don't think about enough about ourselves. We don't, and it's, it's, and it's like the more we give to other people, the less kind we are to ourselves. So, yeah. And I know we, um, we, we talk about this old, uh, day planner that Megan and I both had called the day designer, which we both love. love um, and it has a spot on at the daily calendar to write a couple of things that you're grateful for, but you don't have to necessarily have a special planner to do that or a journal that's you know prompting you to do that. You can just try to make it your practice, whether you write it down. I like to write things down. That that's way the way that I like kind of you know feel comfortable doing that stuff rather than saying it to like my reflection in the mirror or something. <laughs> but um however you want to do it. If you find time to just give yourself one or two things that day that you're grateful for, it will change your perspective and it will at least inject some positive energy into your life. And everyone can benefit from that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Because I think, you know, when our brains are in dark space, it can be easy to forget all the blessings that we do have. Um, you know, because, It could always be worse, like you said, and um, there are things that are going right, even if it's easier to see the things that are going wrong. It's always easier to see the things that are going wrong. Yeah, it's also, it's also easier for our brain to stay in that negative headspace too. You know, it's easier to manifest more things that could go wrong. And like, now this is where we're at to pull yourself out of that takes discipline and it takes strength and it takes 
like truly wanting that better version of yourself to persevere over whatever's going on. And I mean, like I, from losing my mom completely suddenly, like I've gone through some crazy stuff where it's like, how do you pull yourself when there's that imbalance going on? And just, it's, it's like a mental samurai thing, you know, but if you do it, and you do it a few times and you feel the results, then, then that result becomes a thing that you want more than that feeling of being depressed. You know, yeah. sometimes we get used to, and that feeling sense becomes like, almost like a home, you know, mm-hmm. to us. Absolutely. That's, it's not good either. It's not, you don't want to stay in that space because it's a really dangerous place to live. And if you can remind yourself of some of the positive qualities that you have as a person or some of the things in your life that are going right, it gives you your brain, the space to imagine that things could, other things could go right. And if you have some positive qualities and you focus on those, then it gives yourself kind of, um, the ability to imagine that things can change and improve and that you have some control. Um, even if sometimes it doesn't feel like it. So starting to think that way are the, is the first little like baby steps to, uh, coming out of burnout and it's comforting because emotional burnout often feels like it's coming from like just this uncontrollable sense of feeling not in control you know exactly that's what that's what it is just control if i can just control even like this little thing i'll feel better yeah (laughs) because essentially burnout is feeling stuck you're feeling stuck and overwhelmed and and not in control so yeah and if we're taking steps if we're taking steps then we feel like I, you're doing something mm-hmm. to change the outcome, mm-hmm. to unstuck yourself. Mm-hmm. And, and that's the first little beginnings of feeling power over your life. Mm-hmm. So I, I can't stress that enough. You, even if it feels, you know, looking at the situation, you can be like, I have, this is crazy. There's nothing. I can't even say anything. Even if it's this, this decision to go, you know what, tonight I'm going to watch that show, you know, like, making the decision to put yourself on a priority of lists of things that are going on. You're like, man, I am just, I, I know that deadline is, and I should, I should do that tonight, but like, this needs to happen now because this is like SOS, SOS, mm-hmm. like even just making the decision, you're already on the right step. You know, yeah. like it's the ones who know it and continue to push forward. Absolutely. That is, that's, that's like the ticking time bombs. Like we talk about, you know, well, this, um, this is a really hard topic. I'm sure that there are people hopefully out there listening who needed to hear this message today and who are right in the thick of this. Cause man, I, we've both been there. Um, and we'll probably be there again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, it's not a one-time thing. This is, it's a marathon situation and you got to learn tips and tricks along the way to make it through this marathon craziness that is life. Cause it's like, you can't let these things knock you down. Yeah. And that's out. That's the beautiful thing about having gone through emotional burnout a few times now in my life is that I can remind myself that I've been through it before and I've made my way out the other side. You know, it's like, uh, I've, I've handled this before and, and I did, you know, I came out of it. So I understand when the first time is probably the worst time, but, um, understand that it doesn't last forever. So mm-hmm. We hope you guys are uh, coming up with strategies and we would love to hear them. If you have any strategies that we didn't mention that you think um, people would benefit from hearing, I'm always excited to learn from you guys. You can go to our Facebook page. She's a full on Monet on Facebook and um, find our discussion group there and share what's worked for you when you've been burnt out or what you're currently doing to get yourself out of burnout. I would love to hear it. Absolutely. And thank you guys again for joining us. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Thanks so much for listening to this week's episode. Don't forget to bookmark our site. She's a full on Monet.com and subscribe to our newsletter. You can also find us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. If you're enjoying this podcast, it helps us a lot. If you can follow rate and review. See y'all next week. Bye.